record on this computer. Yeah, guys, again, uh, welcome to the last um, timeline day today of the New Testament. We started everything well from the birth of Jesus until the last um, mission of Paul, the fourth mission. Today, we're going to, to start from there where he's in Rome all the way until the end of the Bible when John writes uh, the book of Revelation. Um, so yeah, uh, last week, uh, this is where we ended up um, on with Paul's four journeys. Um, he was finally arrested from Jerusalem and he ended up in Rome under house arrest and then he had a period of two years uh where before he can appear before uh before caesar was nero uh because he has appealed to caesar uh in order for him to have uh, a hearing there uh so he was free in that two years under house arrest and we have learned that um that is where the bible actually ended uh, and he has been writing all of these letters. He had enough time to write all of these letters to Colossia, to um, uh, and to all these places. Um, Ephesians as well, uh, and one to Philemon, to, to Philemon, and even the book of um, the letter to the Philippians. So the Bible actually ended up um in the book of acts uh just when paul arrives in rome so um but then again maybe while while we're still here do you remember why paul wrote uh to the colossians because uh, this is very important from now on going forward uh any anyone who can answer this uh Maria. I, I don't know. Um, who, who wants to, to try? I will try. Yes, it please. was because I've forgotten the names, the husband and the wife that Paul left them. They started bringing in the uh, traditional things to the Bible and needed to go and uh, needed to write to them to tell them the correct way. Um, I, I speak about uh, uh, Priscilla and Aquila. That's the name, yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah, no, those two, those two were accurate actually because they were already discipled by, by Paul before he left. And when he returned, there was just one Apollos uh, who didn't have enough information uh, and he, um they actually taught him uh you're right they taught him uh but but maybe let me let me remind you who who are the, by the way let me let me just ask do you remember who the colossians were the colossians differ from everyone else because of one thing uh because within were they not uh, Greeks? Yeah, I mean, they're all Greeks. All these people are Greeks. So I think it's... But, yes? They are, they are different because he never visited the town. Yes, yes. He never went there to preach the gospel. Yes. That's what made them to be different because he has never been there. So he wrote to them and he also wrote to Philemon. But there was something that was happening in that church, uh, which it's, it's major. That one, I can't let you guys go without giving me an answer because it's almost the rest of the Bible from now on, even with some before anyway, uh, they are dealing with this issue. It is the main issue in, in churches. And if you don't get this one, you are not going to be able to interpret the rest of the scriptures. What was the problem? 
Um, the, the church in, in, in Colossae, they were taught a different a gospel that was based on Greek philosophy. Aha, uh -huh. thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that because that is big. And that first gospel, uh, I've even given you guys uh, a link to videos. You know, uh, that is Gnosticism. We, we've given it a name, uh, Gnosticism. You know, and guys, it's big. This, this, it's, it's much more, um, much more uh, 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 destructive than uh, ceremonial law. Remember, there was a problem with the, the with the Pharisee believers and and others like Peter at first, who wanted um, the Jews or uh, the Christians who were not Jewish to follow the uh, mosaic uh, ceremonial law. You know, that was the first problem in the church. The second problem in the church is because this gospel went into the Greek areas, like uh, Thing was saying, you know, the Greek influence and the Greek philosophy from Plato backwards started this whole thing of Gnosticism. And I've given you guys uh, the videos where I really dig uh, I discuss deeply what Gnosticism is. So, you know, we're going to discover that in more of the uh, Bible books, uh, Bible letters that are going to be written, uh, that became our books, are also to deal with this same issue. So Peter is also going to write, you know, uh, to deal with this very same issue. Uh, and Jude, and later on, anyway, uh, you're gonna realize that John also is writing to deal with Gnosticism, you know. Uh, and you see, you've got two extremes here. You know, these so-called Judaizers uh, that I believe uh, compose mainly of the Pharisee Christians, they want to, to, to find um, righteousness through works. Uh, self righteousness, you know, and uh, and you know they were trying to impose that thing as well by following ceremonial law. Uh, as I've said, this is one side. On the other side, you're finding the other ones, the other extremes who don't want laws, who you know hyper grace, you know, bring all these Greek things, and this is why this is this is like the main 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 problem. So you're gonna realize that. Um, uh you know uh the apostles are going to be dealing with that please guys review gnosticism and i've told you how it is even in today's forms um you know so it's 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 peter and judas who are actually writing uh against these false christians uh and the teachers that have been teaching this um moving away from judaism as a religion to some greek hyper grace and um, sort of giving license to sin, you know, especially sexual sins. Uh, maybe while I'm still here, uh, who, who is this Judas? And why does he call himself Jude? Who do you think? Just, just guess me. Who's Judas and why, why does he call himself Jude? Okay, tell me why does this guy, his name, his true name is Judas. Why, 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 why would he call himself Jude? Just, just a guess, guys. You know, you know this thing. Judas, to be different from Judas Carrot. Yes, man, guys. You know this. You, you, you mustn't complicate things. You know. Um, so, so yes, he's trying to differentiate himself from Judas Iscariot, because that name now has become a very bad name. So this is actually Judas, uh, the brother of Jesus, but we'll deal with that when we get to the books. Um, yeah, so as I've said, I mean, you know where the book of, of, of Act ended. Uh, so we no longer have like history, because the book of Acts that ends when Paul gets to Rome. You know, uh, so most of the history, we actually are going to get it from the books 
you know, you can you be able to put some ones and twos together and, and uh, from the books that were written there after, after Paul was, was, uh, was, uh, was in, in Rome. Uh, we, we also got disciples of the disciples as well, who, who also wrote a lot. Uh, and they kind of give us some information. Uh, and Josephus is also there. Uh, and you know, the disciples of disciples were also called church fathers. Um, you know, so one of those uh, is Arrhenius. You know, I had a list of them. You know, I deal with those things in the in the in the in the in the, um, uh, in the videos that I do about the the history of the Antichrist and all, and all of that. So here we are mainly content, uh, concerned about the Bible and the scripture. So I'm not going to uh, add too, too much information. So one of those, as I've said, it's Arrhenius, uh, who placed as well Peter and Paul in Rome together, um, which we shall discuss later. But what is left of Paul, we can gather from some books like Timothy and Titus. Uh, so, um, Paul got to Rome. He has appealed to Caesar. What happens next? You know, um, we read that he has left and he went somewhere in Crete. Uh, and that that we get from the book of Titus, uh, from the letter that he wrote to Titus. Uh, and then in Second Timothy, we also hear that, um, you know, uh, he was in Corinth where Erasmus was left, and he was also at uh, Miletus uh, where he left uh, this ill guy. Uh, Tromphimus Trom was ill. So now we're gathering that, you no, know, he moved from Rome and he went to these other places, you know. So from the content as well, we're even going to gather even more information of what was happening. We also read from Titus 3 as, as well, that um, he was at Nicopolis and he wanted Titus to come there you know, so we're gathering some form of um, this guy's movement uh, and uh, with the content and, and the rest uh, from, from other, from uh, the writings as well of, of, the, of, of, of the disciples, we are able to put some information together and infer what has actually happened because the Bible did not fully tell us. So obviously, Paul, for him to be to be able to leave Rome, uh, he actually did have, he actually did go before Caesar, and like the rest, uh, Caesar did not find him uh, guilty. You know, he must have been released. That's why he continued in his mission. And something that I know that I did not write in my notes, although we're going to deal with it. Um, because so far, we've done all these books and everything in my notes, I've shown you when, when was each book written, but there was one book that, that I just remembered now that I haven't, I don't have it in my notes, you know, uh, to say uh, the book of Acts, when was it written, you know, uh, although I was going to deal with that mainly in when we deal with the book itself, I may as well just also give you some information uh, because, you know, it is this guy, Luke, who is writing and, um, you know, uh, he's writing because um, he wanted to tell a story about this Jesus movement. He wrote first to someone called is it Theophilus, you know, some one of those, I don't know, uh, some, some name like that, uh, that we're going to discuss in detail when we get to the book. So you write the book of Luke and it's writing this one, you know, so the book of Luke is trying to show 
um, how Jesus uh, was actually uh, not found guilty by, by the Romans and how the whole movement was not really actually anti-Roman. And then you also see it throughout here in the whole book of Acts, you know, uh, where all the Roman um, uh, judges, if I may call them, uh, they found him not guilty. We've dealt with it uh, in the previous um, in the previous uh, lessons. So now Luke is actually writing to this guy that we are going to discuss more in detail in the future. But this guy seems to be, um, he seems to be like a lawyer who's supposed to go and represent Paul uh, at this hearing with, uh, that is appealed to Caesar. So he needs to gather as much information to give this guy so that this guy may use this and present it before Caesar to show that this guy is not guilty as he has not been found and show all the works that he has been doing and that, you know, these are just religious things. They're just believing in some Jesus. They're just another uh, sect of, of Judaism. And, you know, and these guys haven't caused any problems to the Romans. And probably this is why Caesar or Nero did not find this guy any um, guilt of, of contravening any law of um, of the Romans. So he was released. So now when he was released, where did he go? He went to Crete, as we are gathering here in the book of Titus. And now we're going to see that he's also going to Corinth and Miletus and, and uh, Nicopolis. I don't know how to pronounce this thing. Uh, this name. So, so it means from there in Rome, uh, our fifth journey that I'm writing now in green, I hope you guys will be able to see it. Um, Paul must have went to Crete uh, from Rome, and then from Crete, he must have been um, uh, someone just sent a message, it's Samuel, okay, she's saying that she won't be able to join. So from Crete, um, he must have then went to Melitus, which is somewhere in Asia then. So uh, not far from Ephesus and, 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 and um, Colossae. And then because we also read uh, in the letters to the Colossians, uh, we read it last week. He actually promised that he's, he's planning to come to the Colossians. So we also infer on this one that he must probably have went as well to uh, or to Colossium. So um, uh, what else? Um, but from here, we know that uh, from the letter of Titus, he went past trials, you know, uh, which is where they always go through when they're going to Macedonia. So let's look at that. Oh, yeah, that is from 2 Timothy 4.13, you know, because he's talking about, it's telling t Titus to bring his cloak that he has left in trials. Uh, bringing it where? Bringing it in Nicopolis. Uh, but we know, uh, we know that he has passed through Corinth as well, as I've, as I've, uh, as I've shown it before. So, um, so let's go and show it on the map. So he went to Trios from Colasse and then went all the way to Corinth, and from Corinth, um, he went to Nicopolis, which is somewhere they in Greece. You know, so now other scholars have got many theories, uh, and they've got many, um, their own inferences. Remember, this is just an inference, you know, and they've got, uh, their own um, um, 
simulations. And me, I find this one to be much more better, much more easier, uh, and much more understandable when you're reading the scriptures. So, yeah. Um, some of them, they take some information from other sources. Me, I just realized, you know what? Let me only use the Bible. So, some also think just because uh, Paul mentioned in these letters, in this letter to the Romans, that is planning to go to Spain. You know, uh, so Paul actually must have also uh, went to Spain uh, and to try and make it be like he went to Spain. They also take a letter from Clement. Uh, Clement is someone that Paul also mentions um, that he was with. So he was he was a companion of Paul. Um, he was a companion of Paul, and he wrote this letter. And um, in this letter about Paul, he wrote even these words that Paul have reached the furthest limits to the West. So when they're hearing the furthest limit to the West, they're thinking, hey, then he might have went to Spain. Um, so like I said, uh, Clement is one of Paul's companions, was mentioned in, you can read about him in Philippians 4, 3. So it's someone who was with him. So, you know, but it's not stipulating where exactly did he go in the feathers of the West, you know, because Rome is also in the West, you know, but furthest, it's also further, but further more when you're moving from Spain. Maybe let me just get a map. Uh, do I have a map here? Let me get a map um, and just show it. Spain is somewhere that side, you know when you move from Italy. Uh, so uh, the people, they conclude that he must have went to, um, uh, to Spain. So, but again, remember, you know, just because Paul planned something uh, that the Holy Spirit has indicated that he can go there. Remember the Holy Spirit even actually prevented him from going to Asia at first, you know, um, until Lydia changed the situation. But does it mean that just because he has planned to, you know, he might, he might have went, uh, but it's also possible. It's just that it's immaterial uh, and it does not really matter to the gospel. I just wanted you guys to know this because sometimes you'll find that you're arguing with some people or you, you, you have to talk to some other people, especially the Catholics, they've got their own, um, their own beliefs, like um, Peter was in Rome and all of that. And, you know, I find something different from the scriptures, you know, because they're trying to build this, this whole thing that Peter was their Pope uh, and he was the first, uh, bishop there, but Paul wouldn't have went there if there was already um, if there was already a, an apostle was when there. He was writing actually the book of Romans because there hasn't been an apostle. Uh, you know, so he was laying down the whole foundation. So I've got many other reasons as well. So now uh, so let's plot those events again that had just happened for, from Rome to Nicopolis. Um, so, oh, by the way, so I've already written that. So Paul and Luke, they're released from Rome. And then Paul travels to Crete, Melitus, Trans, Corinth, and Nicopolis. So now, when he was there, uh, there's some more information, um, interesting history, something that will change the history of Christianity. Uh, oh, yes, by the way, he also writes uh, Titus and First Timothy. 
uh, during this time period. Uh, so now what is left of Paul's letters, it's only second Timothy. So we've shown how all of Paul's letters were written and uh, very few books in the Bible are left now. Um, so now let's get into some interesting history. Uh, around 64 day, 63, uh, Nero starts fire. Uh, those who were with me in the beginning of the of, of, of our sessions a while back, a uh, few years back, they will know that we discussed how Nero started this fire. He was burning Rome, and then he was playing his musical instrument, and then he blames it on the Nazarenes or the, the, the Christians. Uh, you know, is this scapegoat? Everybody already hates them. Uh, and then what happens? Uh, this is something that is actually going to start the persecution of Christians. You know, this guy will even ban Christians and use them as, as torches to light up his garden. You know, he pales them on the on some poles and lights them so that they can they can be like a, a to torch uh, torches for for you know. So now. When you hear about Christian persecution, this is it. Jesus talks about it. And, you know, it now begins. He has promised, you know, um, the persecution by, the, by uh, those unbelieving Jews was actually nothing compared to what it's about to start now. And this is going to change the history of Christianity and it's going to change the history of and the correctness of the gospel. So I'm not going to go much into detail about it. Uh, I've, I've shot videos about it. Uh, here we're interested in how the Bible is written and what was happening in, during those timelines and what has informed uh, the writing of these gospels. Because most, most of them you're going to realize, um, and I, I think I forgot to put it in here, like the book of Hebrews, uh, it, it, it is written, whoever is written it, uh, you know, he's writing it because there is, uh, there is this persecution now of Christians. And now it is safer uh, for Jews uh, who are Christians to now say, look, this is the same faith, Judaism and and Christianity, you know, look, it's the same thing, you know, it's just a sect, you know. So we can actually save ourselves and save our lives by not be, by by saying, no, we are not the Nazarenes, you know. Uh, and then by so doing, you are not going to be persecuted, you know. Uh, but then once you do that, the problem is now you are, you know, you are now believing that you can use uh, Moshe's ceremonial law uh, to achieve righteousness. And the writer is writing to, so look, that stuff was just, um, you know, it, it was just, uh, uh, it was very inferior. It was very, it didn't even do the job. All of those lambs that were sacrificed, they, they didn't even make anybody righteous. And you compare everything to Jesus and how Jesus was the real thing and how we can, can only be saved by believing in Jesus or what we call grace. And you know, uh, and you better, you better uh, go through the persecution and how important the persecution, the persecution is, you know. Uh, and yeah, so it's 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 part of those books that when you read, you gotta have this sort of background of what was happening. Uh, and uh, some other books as well. We will we'll discuss them when we uh, when we when we when we go into the books, and we'll be able to come back to our um, to our timeline and say, remember, this is what was happening, and then we will read the content of the books and discuss why and what's happening and why. Then you'll be able to interpret 
uh, just like or just like I just did now with um, the book of Hebrews. So, um, when this thing happened, um, when the persecution started, uh, Paul then is going to be arrested again in 66 and be brought back to Rome, you know. Uh, and how do we know this? It's because he writes this uh, last letter to anybody. Uh, and this letter is Second Timothy. And this is where he tells us that he's actually now bound in chains, like a criminal. He's been treated really badly. And he's, this is happening in Rome. You know, uh, there's an, another verse I think it also mentions that he's in a dungeon. So now, when you read this, if you did not know, and it's difficult sometimes if you don't have this uh, timeline that I just did, you might think it's that time, that first time when he was arrested in, when he was in Rome, you know. But this is the second time. Because that time, you know, he couldn't have been bound in chains and be treated like a criminal or be thrown in a dungeon where people would search for him, you know, earnestly where it should be easy to, to be found. Why, why can't it be? What, what was, how was Paul in that first arrest in Rome? How was he treated when he arrived at Rome? Uh, the first time it was house arrest. Yes. Uh, thank you, guys. I'm happy when you guys um, give these good answers. You know, he was under house arrest, so he was free. That's why he was free enough to even go and gather the Jews and preach to them. He was free enough. Uh, you know, he even wrote all these letters and sending people. People knew where he was, so, he, you know, he didn't need to be searched. You know, he was he was not in chain. He was treated like a Roman citizen, or uh, who has not been found guilty of any of any charges. You know, so by this time he's treated like a criminal. They are really dealing with him, and this shows that you know this is the second time, and he's really desperate. I don't know if I wrote it on on this note. You know, but you also realize he's also crying because he's writing to Timoth, saying, "Timoth, I want you to come." You know, everyone has deserted me. All these guys, all this crew, all these many names that have been hanging around, they deserted him, you know, and he he only had Luke, you know. Uh, and yeah, you know, um, I think he also mentioned Mark, but I'm not sure if it's that John Mark. It seems to be a different Mark, but we'll see it when we get to the book. You know, so um, this is where, I, again, he also wrote the famous verse um, that when we read it, we are even going to understand, you know, uh, those couple of verses and the context there as well. Uh, Paul is saying, look, this is the last letter, guys. Uh, I'm done. I'm finished. I've done my work. I've done everything that the Lord is. You know, he's finished his, his mission, you know, and now he's ready to die, uh, you know. Um, and many have speculated how Paul died, and I don't want to engage in that because the scripture doesn't tell us. Uh, but dying for Christ, he did die for Christ, and he's finished that work. That Christ, when he appeared to, to him in Damascus, on the way to Damascus, you know, has given him that mandate. So he actually finished his job. So this is the last letter, and this is the last we are going to hear about our beloved apostle, um, Saul. So now, the drama starts now, uh, because in uh, some way, uh, around this time, this uh, governor, uh, Garcias Flores, he actually goes and takes the money from 
from the temple uh, and uh, temple treasure. You know how the Jews feel about, about that. And then he says, no, it has to be sent to Caesar. Caesar, you know, and this makes people to be mad. And now they started mocking him. Uh, what they will even do, they will, they will start passing even the baskets to people to <laughs> like, like um, offering, you know. You know what we call offering when people are giving money to say, okay, let's collect some money for, for Flores as if it's like a poor person. And he got angry, you know. He started uh, arresting people uh, even big uh, 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 senior figures uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, and then he hanged them on the crosses. You know, he started crucifying them. And this obviously now it's going to remind the Jews of some other time. I'm going to ask you just now. And then they're going to start a rebellion, you know. Uh, and then now it's, it is in this time in 66 where now the Jews decided, you know what, we are even going to form our own government. You know, the rebellion has started. Uh, this, this is the Jewish revolt uh, against the Romans, which is uh, very popular in, in, uh, with the historians. So these guys, the high priests, the former high priests, remember just before Gamla, there was uh, Ananas. So Ananas uh, and Juan Gideon and this Gamla, uh, the former high, these former high priests, they formed that government. Uh, and they even gave now uh, some Pharisee uh, a position in Galilee to be a commander of uh, in Galilee, and this uh, Pharisee was named um, uh, Matityahu. Uh, what was this? Yeah, Joseph Ben uh, Matityahu. Uh, so this man is a very important man. Uh, is what is his name? Uh, Sfiso here. Is Sfiso here? Yeah, Sfiso, who's, who's, who's Matityahu? Who's this guy who's going to be very popular with us? Or uh, anybody wants to guess? And I mentioned him when I was mentioning Pharisees back in the days. Uh, when I was when I was talking about look when I was trying to make up my case why uh, Pharisees were not really um, as wicked and as much opponents of Yeshua as we have been traditionally conditioned to to think they did have some issues but he had many followers and I was mentioning even some of his followers and. Uh, and how they spoke well of him, and you know, and then I mentioned another famous Pharisee. Um, I shall anybody? Want... Okay, I will. I will. I will speak about him later. Oh, oh my God! I think I've already, <laughs> I've already written it here. Okay, this is the man, the historian. Uh, what is the name of the historian that has been giving us history that we've been reading about from the, from the, from that four hundred years between the new, the so-called Old Testament and New Testament, uh, the books that we, we used to read about the Maccabees and everything. Josephus. Yeah. So this is Josephus. This is the man who wrote a lot of history, who has told us what has been happening and we are able to also uh, connect some uh, a lot uh, in the Bible. Um, this man is going to be called Josephus later on and I'll show you how, how he became that. Uh, so this is the... No, it's not a book by myself. It's a Bible. 
Uh, sorry, are you guys saying something, um, Nick? No, we're not. We're sorry. The mic was supposed to be muted. Sorry, sorry. Oh, eh? The mic was supposed to be muted. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, man. Hey, secrets will come out and this year and go <laughs> and go on social media. <laughs> yeah. So now, um. So when this stuff happens now, there's, a, there's, a, there's this um, revolt of the Jews. Now King Agrippa is gonna try and, you know, try to create peace and try to get the Jews to submit under the, uh, under the rule of, of the Romans because he's pro-Roman. Uh, but you know what, this Agrippa is gonna fail. Uh, and they will end up even chasing him and all the Roman uh, officials. So what will happen now, remember just above Galilee, there's um, uh, the Syria then, you know, uh, then the governor of Syria sent his uh, legions to come and deal with this um, revolt. Uh, but then somehow, uh, the zealots and all these rebels, uh, they managed to ambush the whole big Syrian army. Um, so now, what will that remind you of now? They've got that victory. What will that remind you of? Guys, I need Oscar. Yeah, the question is that look, here is a big um legends of Roman army coming from Syria to come and deal with these Jews that are you know uh that have uh, uh um have revolted against um against the uh, their oppressors. Uh and now when they are coming into Galilee, they, they get ambushed and they are destroyed. So the Jewish rebels, they win. You know, they get a victory there. So and I'm saying, what does that remind you of? The Maccabean revolt. Revolt. Yes. yes. So now, you know, the Jews at this time, they must be believing, look, the time it's here. You know, uh, you know, the Messiah might show up again. And again, who are the people that were leading? Uh, who are the Maccabeans? Who are the Maccabees? What were they? Priests. Yeah, they were priests. So even here, you, you, you know, you're getting all these priests, you know, yes, the Pharisee. You know, it's leading even down in in, in Jerusalem. It's, it's the you know, it's the it's the high priests, the Sadducees. You know, leading this whole movement. Again, it's the same same kind of people. So it's you know, people now are starting to get hope. You know, because remember, the Yeshua has left, and now the Jews and even the followers were still, um, you know. Uh, they were still now wondering what happened because uh, the Messiah is supposed to destroy um, the Romans. That is his main task. Daniel has told us, the scriptures have told us, you know. And now you must understand the Christians have been, uh, when we're going to read the books now of um of what Matthew and all of that uh, and, and, and those guys and when these books were written as well, you know, you're also going to realize that, look, they were promised by Yeshua himself that it's gonna come, but first they're gonna go through this persecution. And then he has given them signs. When you see this thing is, so now he did promise that he's gonna return and deal with the Romans, you know? And now many books as well from here, you know, you will be able to understand that they are written to people who are now looking forward and they know now is the time for the Messiah, you know, 
uh, Christ is supposed to really come back now. Uh, all the signs that he has promised have already occurred and the persecution is here. Now um, the Messiah must come. You know, Jesus must come back. You know, uh, the apostles have been killed left, right, and center. You know, they are all going to be finished uh, around this time. And then only, uh, only John is going to be left and is going to live until a very old age. So now, let's first again go back to um, our history now. It's happening there in, in, in Judea. Now, Nero, Nero as the Caesar, he sends now a general, uh, one of his best generals called uh, Vespasian, Flavius Vespasian, to go and deal with this, Jew, uh, with this Jewish revolt. So now Agrippa, uh, Herod Agrippa also sends his forces to help Vespas uh, Vespasian, uh, and then they manage to take over uh, Galilee, you know. Now, remember who's in who's, who's who's the commander in Galilee? Who's the commander of of the rebels? <laughs> Guys, I just told you now. Who's who's commanding the? the rebels in Galilee. Yo. Okay, must I? It's one of the priests you said. It's one of the... <laughs> Go. Yeah, he is one of the priests. We, I had a lengthy discussion about him. Oh, you said, uh, it's not... Yes. Matthias. Matthias, uh, flat, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. Yes, so yeah, so Matitihahu, uh, escapes, he was the leader there, uh, because now the Romans have taken over Galilee with the help of Agrippa. And then he's, he, he runs away, he flees to the caves and, you know, they didn't want to commit suicide and, you know, um, but they ended up being captured and taken as prisoner. Uh, to Rome, but something helped him because this man prophesied that Vespasian is going to be an emperor of Rome. So it's actually pleased Flavius uh, Vespasian. So he kept him um, and later he's going to release him uh, and adopt this guy uh, and rename him uh, Flavius Josephus. So now this man is going to help him write. And uh, you know, he's a Pharisee, he's got all the history. So when he's writing all this history and all this information that we're getting, you know, he's writing uh, for the fair Flavians, uh, for uh, Vespasian's um, family. Um, you know, some also believe that, you know, uh, he will bend history here and now and then for the sake of the Romans. Uh, so we don't know. Uh, but this, by the way, uh, what, what didn't I mention? Yeah, the zealots as well, when, 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 when Galilee has been attacked, remember most of the zealots are actually even in Galilee because, uh, remember who started this? movement of the zealots. Do you by any chance still remember him? He was called something of Galilee. So uh, they run away from, from there and then they go down to um, these zealots, they go down to Jerusalem. And this is going to play an important role when they arrive there in Jerusalem. So now 
Vespasian. Uh, let's put everything now on our timeline, because now around this time Vespasian uh, is sent to crush the Jewish revolt. Um, and now this Gaius Flores, because he has caused this uproar, you know, Rome was always about order, you know, so they replaced him uh, with one uh, Julianus. Now something uh, happened in 68, Nero commits suicide. Um, oh, this are not, it's not coming in order. Uh, and then Galba became emperor. Uh, and Gal Galba is not from uh, Nero's family. And now this is when the whole Caesar's family, Julius Caesar's family ends here. You know, you no longer now have um, the Caesars per se as uh, the emperors of Rome. So now this man, Galba, um, is actually murdered by one Otto and from there Otto commits suicide and one Vitellius becomes um, emperor and then he's killed by a mob. And then this is when the prophecy of uh, Flavius Vespasian uh, being Emperor comes to uh, to her to okay. So now, from now on, um, you know, because now when Nero dies and when all these things are happening, Flavius Vespasian has to go back to to Rome because he's now going to be the new emperor. So he leaves uh, his son Titus. Now this is one other Antichrist who's going to besiege Jerusalem and destroy the temple. And later on when his father dies, he's going to replace him as the emperor. And from here now you're going to have the Flavians um, as the new emperors. And you'll, this will also help you guys because um, there's a lot out there where people are saying, look, Christianity, was actually uh, formed by the Flavians. You know, this Jesus stuff didn't really exist. These people, they've created this, you know. So there's a lot about these um, Flavians because uh, if it's not Constantine, some people say it's, it's these guys who actually created Christianity and they created this Jesus and it's, it's you know, but information is out there. Uh, but this is when they begin to actually rule. Uh, so, uh, this slide that is coming, it's not supposed to be there. So I'll jump it to this one here and speak about Titus, that he destroys the temple, they besiege it and they this, they kill the Jews. But what is important as well, this is three days before Passover. And remember what, during Passover, all the Jews from the diaspora, from all of those places that we've seen in Acts, you know, they come uh, for Passover. So now the Romans have got a lot of people to kill and they killed a lot of Jews, uh, including those that came from outside. Excuse me. Um, and Josephus actually says that there was 1.1 million people were killed and mostly uh, Jews during this siege. And um, uh, there's also some information about that this Titus also uh, did something to profane the temple. Uh, but there isn't really, uh, you know, there's this couple of historians, Eusebius is one of them, and Eusebius is, uh, is, is 
uh, Constantine's uh, historian and really some of the stuff you can't really trust, you know, but a lot of people later on when you're dealing with the book of, of, uh, of Revelation, uh, you'll find there's a lot of people in the, in the West who believe that um, what uh, that the book of Revelation, the things that are written there already happened, you know, uh, and either some put it uh, during Nero's time, that Nero was the Antichrist and, and everything, and that uh, the, uh, the abomination of desolation, which Jesus talked about, um, you know, it actually happened. And then that Nero is actually the triple six antichrist. And indeed, when you actually put his name, when you calculate it, because they used to have that method of putting a name and calculating with the number, it does come to 666. And John writes it, uh, but that would be a problem uh, because um, Logically, why do you think it would be a problem that Nero will be the Antichrist, that triple six Antichrist that John is writing about? How will that be problematic? Maybe it's because I haven't reached that part of John as yet. So I'll just mention, mention it. Um, that John actually is going to write that book somewhere around uh, here, where are we now? Here we are like in 69 uh, and Nero just died a year before in 68. So John is going to write this about uh, 35 years. He's gonna be really old by the time when he's writing this. You know, so Nero will be long gone. So that already is problematic, you know, because we're, we're still going to deal with it when you come to the book of Revelation, which we are not going to go into too much detail because we've already done the book of Revelation. Uh, you know, um, maybe I'll mention it just now when we get to John because we're going to end in the next three nights and uh, we'll discuss John. So now, so these many people were killed, 1.1 million of people. Now the zealots, remember now they moved from up there, now they come to Jerusalem where it's, you know, it's the land of the Pharisees. You know, uh, they start having beef. They are not agreeing. They even fought one another, one another, even to the point of even killing one another. So now they've got the Romans and now, you know, they're fighting against one another, you know. And this is what also led to the Maccabean uh, failure. Same issue, you know, while they were still um, fighting one another, um, you know, this is when, as well, even this is how actually even the Romans came and dealt with the public, dealt with them. Once they start fighting one another, this is what happened. They lose focus. So, but Titus conquered them and they took 97,000 slaves. So now all this stuff that we're reading here, when we go to Jesus' uh, prophecies, you're going to find that Jesus has prophesied about uh, a lot of this stuff. And then we're going to see even throughout scripture uh, when we have to understand because after this destruction of the temple, ever since this day in 70 AD, the temple has not been rebuilt. And this is gonna be one of the problems because by the time when John is writing, he's speaking about the temple. So it couldn't have been, you know, the temple has to be there. And the temple is very key to, you know, to the coming of Christ. Because when the temple is profaned, the, 
abomination of desolation occurred during the time of that Antichrist, triple six Antichrist. Uh, and after that, you know, three and a half years after that, Jesus is going to come, you know. So they are busy now with the talks of, of constructions and, and everything of the temple. But for almost 2000 years, the temple hasn't been there. That means no high priests. That means no, no real uh, Judaism. And this was important because now for people only to be saved, you know, the only salvation and righteousness will only come through Christ. And now you understand when Jesus said, look, when they were impressed about how beautiful that temple was, you know, Jesus is going to tell them, look, this temple, it's going to be destroyed and I'll rebuild it in three days. So now Jesus is the new temple, you know, uh, and this year, beautiful temple, it's gone. And, you know, it is the glory of everything. And just like what happened when they were taken in Babylon, they get enslaved. And then we are going to see it through scripture, you know, that this year, what was their sin? Because Previously, when they were taken to Babylon, their sin was idolatry and all of that injustice and, you know, uh, and one of the main things was killing the prophets. And here, you know, uh, they've been promised in the law, you do this, this is what will happen. You know, so they're scattered all around them, they're enslaved. But uh, the prophets have already told us that in these last days, God is going to return them. Uh, and that's why in the 40s, uh, the Jewish state was formed and they started going back and, you know, they are going back. And soon we are hearing now about the rebuilding of the temple. And once that is done, we must know the Antichrist, triple six is coming. And um, after he commits that nonsense, uh, and that is because the devil, actually, for, for, for him to do that, actually, the devil is actually going to not be allowed in heaven, and then it's going to be cast down. We're going to see that in the book of Revelation. And yes, the devil hasn't been cast down as yet. He still goes in, in heaven, back and forth. You see him throughout the Bible, he still goes. But then he's going to be stopped. And once he stopped, he's going to come back down here and angry and he's going to start doing all these sort of things. And the greatest persecution is going to start. So people mistake that persecution for what is going to start now through him. Uh, because the Jews, some those who are, they are enslaved and those who are under 17, they are sold to servitude. And the slaves from this year, they are actually going to be forced to build the Colosseum. Uh, and the Colosseum, uh, do, who, what is the Colosseum? Anybody knows the, the Colosseum? Everybody should know the Colosseum. As Fisa ran away once I said, everybody should know the Colosseum. Um, what is the, the it's, I think it's the stadium where the Olympics started. Mm, um, you are right in the stadium, but it's not where the Olympics started. Remember, we've already dealt with the Olympics. Um, Olympics are, are things of the Greeks. And they, they were started as a worship of Olympia, their, their God. So uh, now we're speaking about Rome. You are right, it's like a stadium. But what is the Colosseum? Guys, you need to know the Colosseum. People go there <laughs> in Italy and all they do is to take pictures of the Colosseum. Everyone shoots pictures there. It's like a symbol of, of Rome, just like that Paris 
bridge. It's like a symbol of fun. People who travel a lot, you guys, you must tell us, what is the Coliseum? The, is, uh, sorry, Oscar, I, I just came in, so correct me. So I, I, the Colosseum, this happened, or are we talking about what happened during the Roman uh, persecution? Ah, you, are, you are forward. Um, I just asked what, what the Colosseum is. Okay, let me guess. Tell me if I'm right or wrong, and then please forgive me. Is, uh, whenever I, I think Colosseum, is it where the, the, the Jews are persecuted by, by the lions eating them? But it was not built. Um, okay. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> the Colosseum, guys, you know, it was also famous for one thing. You watch the movies, guys, no? You watch the movies. What what happens in the Colosseum? Gladiator games. Yes. Yes. So now we did not know this. Now we know that you were not here, uh, Nick, you were saying. But there were the 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 the, the Jews who were taken uh, as slaves, they were forced to build that Colosseum, and they were forced also to be gladiators. So you're right, you know, gladiator is a brutal spot. You know, they got, they get all these, uh, you know, gladiators to represent something, they create some story of Rome, and this great Roman, so they will take really good guys who, are, who can fight and people that they want to kill for sport, you know, uh, they make them enemies of Rome and then they, you know, so it cheers people and people, you know, Romans were that barbaric, you know, so they will be killing people for sport. So now the people that are hated now, people that are slaves, you know, um, uh, are Christians and Jewish. They are the Jews, they've been brought them. And yes, this is the, because I didn't get enough time to plot a lot of, of, of stuff between here um, and John, but this year it's going to begin uh, like a serious hatred for Christians. Uh, ever since Nero, many who come in, they just take their frustrations on, uh, you know, Christians will be easy. So they're going to be persecuted a lot. They are Jews, you know, they are also non-Jews, but they're believing they're part of that sect of the Jews, you know. So this is when the persecution really starts. And then it goes even to higher level when it comes to Domitian, who's going to be uh, the emperor during the time, uh, even in the 90s. And then uh, he's going to take John, uh, the last of the apostles, uh, and he's going to throw him into some boiling oil uh, and uh, and they will throw him in an island uh, called Patmos, somewhere there, somewhere there. So it's near Asia, you know, uh, and, you know, thinking that this guy you know, is going to die anyway, so they'll just exile him there. Uh, but by God's grace, this guy doesn't. And then this is when he writes uh, those books, his letters, you see now he's close to, um, to Asia as well, and Ephesus, you know. So he writes all those books. Uh, Gnostic, non, uh, the Gnostics, they're still a big problem, guys. Big problem. They've taken over, over these Greek lands, and it's like the biggest Christianity. Just like today, 
You see, uh, false Christianity forms the largest group. You've got Catholics, uh, you've got all these other cults and cults, you know, they always got the majority. You've got hyper grace churches, you know, but during this time, it was the Gnostics, you know, and now, you know, they've moved away from, as I explained in the beginning, they've moved away from the, the right way and the correct way, of the Jewish faith, the true Christianity. They've now mixed this thing. They've brought in their, their Greek nonsense into the church and a whole lot of nonsense is happening. Uh, then Paul, I mean, John writes first epistles, second and third, and he also writes the gospel of John, you know, to deal with these Gnostics, to try and prove to them that uh, Jesus was actually flesh. I'm not going to go deep into Gnosticism. I've given you the videos and now you understand what Gnosticism is and why he will be writing all of these letters. Now, while he was in Patmos as well, he wrote the book of Revelation uh, he actually didn't write it. Uh, Jesus actually, the Holy Spirit and the, and the Father, they're the ones who are actually writing. When you read that book, it's called the Revelation of, of Christ, you know, of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one who appears to this guy. You know, it's old, it's, it's messed up. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> that's why some crazy people say, ah, John was already crazy by then, that book, he <laughs> writes exactly, you know. But it's the most important book in the Bible, Jesus said. You know, um, Jesus comes and appears to him. And now uh, he writes, he tells him to write to these churches, to these churches here in Asia, Tiatara, Pegamon, uh, Minor, Ephesus, uh, Leodicea, all those seven churches. You know, and they're being attacked a lot by what? By Gnostics, the Nicolaitans, you know. And um, he's writing to the angels of those churches, you know. What is an angel, guy? We've discussed this uh, when, we, uh, when we're doing the book of, yes. of Malak. I shouldn't. What is it? What is an angel? A messenger. It's a messenger. Yes. Uh, who said that? Sorry, I didn't see. No. Oh yeah, it's a messenger. And what is it in Hebrew? What is a messenger in Hebrew? I just mentioned it a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago. Malak. Yeah, it's a Malak. And that's where we get that book, Malak. Because that person is what? It's a messenger, it's an angel. That person who wrote that book, it's a Malak. You know, so, so you'll understand now when you're reading that when and saying I'm um, write this to the to the angel of the church in Tiatara, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, I have this against you, you know. So so it's those malads, the, the messengers uh, who are probably uh, the church leaders, the elders. They are allowing these Gnostics to do all these funny things. And, you know, Jesus is saying, look, I'm going to come and deal with you. I'm going to spit you out to some. Some saying, I will rub you out of the book. Saying, to like, in Tiatara, he's going to come and kill that woman, false prophetess who's being allowed to preach in church, you know, and, you know, causing even men to commit sexual immorality. He's saying, I'm going to, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to, uh, to kill her and put her children in and sick bed or the other way around, I can't recall very well. And 
and even those ones that, that are in Pergamum where the devil uh, resides, you know. So yeah, he's dealing a lot with those uh, false prophets, you know. So those false prophets were actually false teachers, were actually the Gnostics. And he's, Jesus is saying, you must hate them as I hate them, you know. And this is an attitude that has fallen away Today, when we um, when we fight against false false teaching and everything, you know, the Christians say, "No, we need unity." We need, but Jesus here comes and says, "I'm going to kick you out. You're not going to enter the kingdom. I'm going to mark you out of the my kingdom because you're not hating these people. You're not dealing with these people. You know, the, it's, Christianity is not a uh, it's not about unity." You know, you must have that zeal of the Pharisees. You know, Pharisee means separation. You know, or to separate yourself from those who are practicing false Christianity. You know, and uh, obviously it can't be like, you know, we're talking about like serious uh, false things that pertain to the faith. You know, not that you disagree with one or two small things, then you separate from people. Uh, so, so that's what happens with John. Uh, but John is going to leave Patmos and is going to end up in Ephesus uh, and is going to take Miriam, uh, the mother uh, of Jesus. I don't know how old she will be by then, uh, but then he's going to die there or in old age and some of the writers some of his disciples, I think it's Polycarp. Uh, you know, they said even his, because he was quite old, he will write a lot about love. You know, um, my children love one another, one another. He called them children. You know, he must have been very, very old. You know, um, so uh, that it will be the end and the last of. Um, the books of the Bible. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't manage to get time to to plot all of this on our timeline. But we finished all the books that are in the Bible. We know when they are written. We know what was happening. And now, from next week or so, or the next lesson, we are going to learn uh, each book. And then we know what was happening. We're gonna to come to our timeline and we won't have to go too much into detail because we've already discussed it. And then we'll be able to interpret using uh, that context because we now understand the political context, you know, of, of with, the, with the involving the Jews and the Romans and the high priests and, you know, all of these things, the cultural, you know, uh, context, the historical full context of what was actually happening. So it's going to be easier. Uh, and I don't think there's any, yeah, all the books we've dealt with them. And yeah, uh, and I would like to end here and open up the floor for questions and comments. It's been a long journey. I thought we were going to do this in one lesson, but we ended up having to stretch it to about five. So any comments? Any question? Um, I, I chose to end here because this is where the Bible ends and we're doing, we're, we're dealing with um, the timeline in order to, to interpret the Bible. But there's still more interesting history that you need to know uh, of the church. And I've got videos. Uh, I've got videos that I've done about that. Uh, you may check. Um, you may check a, a list, a playlist that I've that I've got on YouTube of the uh, the history of, of of the Antichrist, 
um, because I deal with all these different antichrists from the beginning, from you know, from uh, the first one that is uh, Nimrod all the way. Uh, I think I ended up with constant time, uh, and a lot of people were also interested in knowing what happened in the Council of Nicaea. So the persecution actually continues after 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 John and many more wicked um, emperors will come, will come at us and you know they will come. And the more they persecute the Christians, uh, the more uh, the church grew. And you, uh, you will also understand that these are not people who are, you know, it's not as, you see, persecution is not as it's being, you know, our carnal minds have been imagining it and the way it's told by non-believers, you know. It's not people who are being, it's people like like uh, St Stefan, the way he was stoned. People who are happy to, to be stoned. People who are giving their lives, they're, they're happy. They're fighting actually to, to go and be. It's a glorious thing. So you see it even when you read the book of Romans, uh, how glorious it is to die for Christ and how, how Paul will also be pushing an agenda that, look, um, if you are not, you know, um, if you want to share the glory or with Christ, you must share his suffering as well. If you are not willing to go through this, forget you, you are in the wrong place. And the main, one of the main important messages that we're going to discuss when we do the book of Acts to say what message was being preached. You know, it was very important that people go through the persecution because there is going to be a resurrection and the king is going to come because the gospel is about the kingdom of God. Yeshua is going to come and Yeshua is promised and he said that if you try to keep your life, you're going to, you're going to lose it. But those who give their lives, you know, um, you know, they're waiting to enter. So if you're not willing to, if you want this so-called rapture before, <laughs> you know, um, the rapture meaning, you know, you are taken away and you are taken to, to heaven so that you don't go through persecution. You are not, you are not worthy to be his disciple, you know. You are not worthy. You, know, you, are, you will not enter that kingdom. Uh, in the book of Revelation, you know, even discuss how God, you know, gives you certain, uh, uh, certain supernatural desire and certain natural supernatural. You don't, I don't believe people feel pain when they're stoned and when they're persecuted. It's an interesting thing. They're giving it, they're enjoying it. There's something, you know, that the Holy Spirit does. Um, and this is why, by the way, we're going to see it in the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit is not given. I need us charismatics, hyper charismatics. We put persecution as uh, the Holy Spirit as that is given so that we can have power to, <laughs> we love this stuff, to heal the sick and what, what. People have been doing that, you know, before. The Holy Spirit has been doing miracles and all this thing. They didn't start at the so-called day of Pentecost. You know, uh, the Holy Spirit was given to give people power to go through persecution. That's why it's called the strengthener. You know, uh, we'll deal we'll deal with that when you get into uh, the detail. So you're going to see it throughout when we're reading a lot of this uh, in context of the persecution and how the Christians take it and how it's part of the gospel. Uh, the gospel that we were not taught because we received the false gospel out of the context of what we have just been learning. So the real rapture, the real rapture is not escaping to heaven. It's actually people meeting with the king and welcoming him uh, that is coming out to destroy the Romans or the revived Rome, the revived Romans which are the Western superpowers. By then, they'll be under one ruler called triple six, you know. 
So it was a marvelous thing. And that's why you see in Revelation, they are told, you know, whoever does not endure this suffering will not enter. You know, uh, um, John is writing to encourage them to go through the persecution and to give their lives for Christ. You know, it's part of part and parcel of, of, of the gospel. If you're not willing to, don't waste your time. You know, uh, you can go to the Gnostics. The Gnostics preach a different gospel. You know, other grace comes from the Gnostics. You know, uh, the, the first day they've been preaching it. They, I've got videos of that, guys. I'm saying go and, and watch them and watch that history. The only thing that managed to stop true Christianity it's because now, because when they were persecuting them, the more they persecute them, the more, the more they increased. And the only way to stop Christianity was to stop the persecution. So they stopped the persecution. And that was when an emperor named Constantine was very smart, stopped the persecution and he made, he stopped, um, uh, uh, he allowed Christianity to be because um, it was Christianity was not allowed it was not um, a lawful religion then he allowed it to be a law and then he faked that he was a Christian but evidence is there he was never a Christian he was a worshiper of the sun god and that's when they brought in this sun god worship not just of Zeus but of his son Apollos uh, and Apollos to the Greeks is what um, what is his name in, in, to the, in, in with the Romans Mithras I've got the whole all videos about that I'm just briefing you uh, but that's when false Christianity uh, came to the highest those people who were afraid to go through the persecution, they were the ones who were the leaders and they would develop to what we call Roman Catholicism. And then from there, you're going to get church fathers and, and saints, well, Augustine. Augustine is gonna come. Uh, Saint Augustine is the most revered man and he's, he's going to start everything that is Western gospel actually stems from that man. And that man is going to start this really replacement theology uh, because the Romans are not going to want to be, <laughs> to have a, a dog as their God, a Jewish dog, you know, that Jewish dog that they killed, they called Jesus. No, they're not. So that's why they will replace him with the white, with their own white Jesus and everything, you know. And you know, and uh, the Jews are uh, hated, and it's one of the signs of the spirit of Antichrist. And this is why they will, they will make you feel like you have replaced them. They are, they they you know they are wicked people. They killed Jesus, our Jesus, our white Jesus you know, and they will just be persecuted and they will just be replaced. And as we are heavenly people, uh, they are very worldly people. And this is where now these things of the law is for the Jews. And as we're spiritual people, we're not under the law. It's another form of Gnosticism. And hyper grace is where, you know, we, we can say we come out of, of uh, the Catholics, but we have taken everything that that is uh, wicked from them. And this is when now God is giving us a time uh, in these last days to purify ourselves with the true gospel and get this nonsense of the, of the Greeks and the Romans out of, of, of our faith and to believe in the perfect and the right gospel. So next week, uh, in closing, we are going to start with the book of Matthew without uh, any glasses from the Greek or Romans. Now we've got the history, now we've got an understanding. We'll put uh, the proper glasses of the people that this gospel has been written to, and mostly Jews, and it was written by Jews, all Jews, except Luke. 
Now, we're going to learn that, how did Luke get all this information? He got it from, from the Jews and he was with Paul and he was with, um, with Peter, you know. Uh, so, you know, same thing with Mark. Mark got everything from Peter. Uh, but Mark, in, anyway, even if he had a Greek father, uh, he had a Jewish mother. But the whole Bible is 100% really written uh, by Jews, you know. Uh, and it's from a Jewish point, point of view. And the, the gospel is very much Jewish. Uh, and when it leaves from being Jewish, it went and became Gnostic. And we don't want to be part of those that Jesus hates and he wants us to be separate from them. Uh, last, last chance for a question or a comment. I've said enough of what I'm supposed to. Hey, um, Peter. Yeah. Hey man, I don't know if you can see the hand thing right there on the side. Hey, I've had it for a very long time, man. Eh? Oh, uh, <laughs> no. No, only now, only now when I, when I stop sharing, I see because everything now will be here. Remember, um, sorry man, that's why I said you must, when I ask, you must interrupt me because when you when you've got things, because I don't see you. Now I see you because I stopped um, sharing. Okay, okay. I didn't know yeah. that. I thought when you when you raise your hand so that you don't interrupt the person when they talk, you just raise it and then they'll acknowledge you as, as they finish. Oh no. Oh, no. Okay. Yep. Yeah, but um, 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 my question is actually it might be out of the um conversation that you already had uh, put in place. But I want to know regarding um, who's this guy? Uh, Martin Luther. I mean, during uh, the, um, the time, the timelines themselves, because he himself, remember, played a particular role in, in all of these things. So when does he appear? Martin Luther appear about 500 years ago, more than 1,500 years after, after this year. And the timeline, like I said, it was not to tell the whole, um, it was not to tell the history of, of the faith of Christianity. It was to tell the history of, of the Bible, um, you know, so that we may be able to interpret uh, the Bible when we've got information uh, around it. So Martin Luther comes in uh, because now the Catholics are going to take over even Rome. Rome is gonna be sung um, by the barbarians uh, that today we call the Germans and the British and the French and all those people. And then uh, Rome, uh, the last um, Roman emperor will be Justinian. And Justinian is going to give the Pope the power to be, um, to be uh, uh, like an emperor, an Icarus. So he's, 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 and then this is when the Holy Roman Empire will begin. So when, when it spreads through, you know, because now Europe is under uh, the Roman Empire. Now to please those barbarians as well, who, um, you know, um, who have got their own cultures, you're gonna realize that the Roman Catholic Church is also going to bring in their beliefs. And we are all gonna end up with all this Christmas and all these things and a whole lot of nonsense in the church, all these Easter's and all this nonsense, you know, uh, but they Christianize them. They find something in scripture and try to make it like it's Christ. It's got something to do with, um, with Christianity. So that will take a couple of years, hundreds of years. Uh, and in the 1500s, you know, what people could see that this nonsense that we're following here it's it's actually 
uh, pagan worship, this Catholicism, you know. Um, and then that's when more so-called reformers, you know, more Calvin and all those, they come, they come in uh, and to try and separate uh, the true believers from the Catholics. So um, uh, Martin Luther was a, was a German uh, and he was actually a priest as well. And he goes to Rome and sees all these things happening. Uh, indulgences, you know, um, funny stuff happening there in Rome. He understood the message of grace, you know, and uh, saying that we cannot be saved through all these things that these Romans are making us do. The scripture is very clear and the Bible must be in everyone's hand. He prints the Bible and he does this so-called 95 thesis to challenge them. But they started persecuting them instead of you know, engaging in dialogue because he wanted to say, look, uh, let's prove this thing you know, uh, by scripture, which we are doing, we need that actual faith. But his main message was the grace. Unfortunately, I can also say he is the father of hyper grace, Martin Luther. So now, why is it important to what we are doing here? You know, why I gave it in this long, long talk, even though we're not discussing the church history, but it's important when it comes to the books. Uh, now, the Gnostics have been trying to get rid of a lot of books that we have today as um, canonical. Uh, you know, um, the first person actually to try and compile the Bible is a man called Marcion, who was a Gnostic. Now, the Gnostics, they don't like uh, the God of the Bible, who's legalistic, uh, who's righteous. They want hyper grace. You know, so they'll get rid of these books. Uh, that don't align with the Gnosticism. So they will try to get rid of almost all the, the most of them, they, you know, always the, the Old Testament or the Tanakh, they're saying it's not scripture. They try to get rid of it. And now when they come to the so-called New Testament, they've got issues as well. They try to get rid of, of James, of Jude, of Peter, of Revelation of John's epistles because they don't align, you know, with um, you know. But Paul's letters are easy to bend and make them gnostic, and make them like he was fighting Judaism, so we can't be under Judaism, we're under grace. You know, all this stuff that we think today it's coming from them. Now, unfortunately, Martin Luther went that road as well. Martin Luther also was trying to get rid of, of the book of, of Revelation, uh, for instance, as well. You know, so because they preach an, a false gospel, which is not balanced, which is Gnostic, hypocrisy. You know, the Bible has to take it in all its intent. And if we do it the way we're doing, we won't find any conflict in the Bible. But if you want to, form your own so-called doctrines and stuff and all this stuff, you know. Uh, so this is why these people were very faulty. And this is why no matter how much they come from, uh, they try to come out from Catholicism, you know, all of these branches that we're having, if it's just Western and it's, it's all coming from Catholics, you are not going to find the true gospel. You have to read the scriptures, you have to study. And this is why in these last days, oh, God is moving us and we are understanding these um, Jewish centered uh, true gospel. Because once you do that, you are not going to find anything, anything wrong, you know. The reason why people wanna read the, only the New Testament is because they're Gnostic. And you know, when people want to, want to focus on hyper grace like Martin Luther, Gnostic. And this is why now, when he goes to the 
to the Catholics and the Popes and say, yeah, the Antichrist. They also tend to say, yeah, the Antichrist too. <laughs> you know, and they're not wrong. You know, some people start well, but so you see this thing of worshiping people, you know, or everyone will, even me, I'll, I'll have faults. And that's why you must get everything. And that's how cults start. People come out like, you know, used by God and they're doing the right thing. And then they start going, keep the, some concept and they start going highway, start their own things. And because they're not taking the entirety of the Bible, they start something and they claim to have a revelation and they start something. Now we've got Methodists, we've got Lutherans, we've got whatever. People are following leaders. Stay away from this worshiping of leaders, you know. And this is one of the main things, by the way, we're going to recognize about this uh, Bible books and the authors, how these books actually were chosen. And the ones that were Gnostics, Gnostic, but there were a lot, guys, more than, uh, I mean, the recent books that were discovered in, 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 in Egypt, um, the Nag Mahat, the, they're like 52 Gnostics. It wasn't just the apostles who were writing. You know, people are writing all these Gnostics. But what differs bet uh, between the Gnostic writings and these ones, these Bible uh, books and letters that we have, you realize that the writers, they take away the the spotlight from themselves and they put everything into Christ and to God and into his things. They are even afraid of mentioning their names. Most of the time you have to find out from somebody else, you know. But the Gnostic writers, it's all about the leaders, what they knew, how they saw and what, and how, you know, how great they became because they got this knowledge and that God has given them and whatever. It's everything is centered around them. You know, so um, oh, guys, I don't know if you can still they can still hear me. Sorry, the phone so, is coming. Just yeah, we can hear you, Oscar. You're very faint, but we can hear you. Yeah, okay, because I can't, you can just print out. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so, so that's it, guys. Uh, so be careful. Of, 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 that's why, even on, on this timeline, I just wanted to have uh, the apostles uh, and not have um, anyone. Oscar, come. Oscar. Come close to 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 that phone that you're using to record the the, the uh, come close to the mic. You are sounding very far away. Oh, is it? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so much this, better. This Thank is you. why. Yeah, our even our scriptures. We are going to be more focused on Christ as the Bible, the whole scriptures about Him, and the books uh, that we're discussing is only focused on those who have who have written written them. Uh, and others. Uh, any more comments? Any, are you are you satisfied, uh, Sweeter? Hey, Oscar, I couldn't hear you very properly, but um, yeah. I think also if you go into the record as well, but I just I just mentioned that um, uh, can go to the recording for details. But I just mentioned that Martin Luther just came back, just only came now uh, five five hundred days ago, and it's also not ideal. But although God used these guys to also go of this, so it's far from the Bible times. We only believe in Bible times that we tell about hundred people. So matching with that comes about 1,400 
Uh, anybody else? Uh, John, John, will it Nothing, John, thanks. <laughs> All right, Matapelo. Yes, John. Oscar, I don't have 